Kirsten, as a principal, do you think this policy to issue warnings rather than prosecutions makes sense? Yeah, so this is one of a number of measures that are long overdue. I mean, we, we wonder why we have such high rates of drug-related deaths in Scotland when we continually punish people who experience drug problems, people who have often experienced unimaginable trauma. So our current drug laws cause extensive and unjustifiable harms to individuals and to communities. And long term, they can exclude people from job opportunities and expose people to a lifetime of discrimination and stigma. And that can kill because it prevents people from actually accessing the help and support that they need. So until there is a complete overhaul of the outdated UK Misuse of Drugs Act, Scotland needs to capitalise on every potential opportunity to reduce harms. And today's announcement was a step in the right direction. Um, Jamie, the Conservatives, the Scottish Conservatives are against this. Why? Uh, well, I mean, our position on the decriminalisation of drugs has been consistent and clear. And I also think that it's a bit of a red herring because what we are talking about when we talk about the criminal aspects of the drug policy is it's diverting away from the real issue, and that's that of treatment and rehabilitation, which, as we know, is failing in Scotland. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that Scotland is part of the same legisl legislative regime as the rest of the UK, but we have a drug death rate which is three times higher. That's a public health failure uh, on the part of the current government, uh, not a criminal justice matter. So, you know, I, I think we ha there are a number of issues why I don't think today's announcement will fully get to the root cause of why there are so many people dying of drugs in Scotland, and if anything, this whole debate around it is diverting uh, much needed attention uh, from the real issue, and that's that we have to treat uh, these people properly. And it's simply not happening. There are far too many drug users uh, entering the system uh, who uh, are not getting support they need. Uh, and, and frankly, that's what the government should be uh, focusing its attention on right now. But Jamie, you don't think this policy would help at all? Well, look, I mean, what we're talking about here uh, are Class A drugs. We're talking about heroin. We're talking about crack cocaine. We're talking about LSD and meth. What we're, what we're saying now is, that it is giving off the entirely wrong message uh, to the criminal uh, fraternity that if you get stopped with uh, these in your possession on our high streets, in our communities, you might just get off of a warning. Okay. Now, I can't see... Uh, there's been no justification for how uh, that will help uh, improve uh, how we tackle drugs in this country. Uh, 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 if anything, I'm actually worried about the effect it has. And more importantly, I think if we'd had a full and frank discussion about this policy, then all of this would have come out in the wash. I want okay, to hear what Police Scotland have to think uh, about this, and I want to hear what drug users in the third sector have to hear about it properly and Kirsten, Kirsten has a view what, on that and all those views are perfectly right. valid but Kirsten, what about this idea those. what about this idea that it's sending out the wrong message and could it perhaps encourage people to, to take drugs knowing that they weren't going to be prosecuted removing prosecution of personal possession of a class a drug is not in opposition to or instead of improving access to treatment continual enforcement and um, criminalisation completely undermines a public health approach. Um, this will not encourage people to use drugs. This policy is aimed at the people who are most vulnerable, most marginalised, who are experiencing significant drug problems, um, and it will absolutely help. We've seen that in other countries like Portugal, where they have moved towards, actually have moved further into a decriminalisation model, but it's also part of a much bigger picture. So this is not a standalone thing. It's part of a number of things that need to be done. We always keep repeating these stories about um, it's no one size fits all, it's no one solution. We know that. We need to throw absolutely everything at this crisis. There are so many things that we need to be doing and there's so many things that we are late to do. Uh, and this is one of those, like we cannot continue to criminalize people who use drugs. Our prisons are full of people with low level drug offenses. We wonder why our prisons are full of drugs when we continually send people who use drugs to prison. Uh, Jamie, what's your response to that? The fact that, you know, the, the prisons are full of people that are using drugs and also this is part of a raft of measures. Yeah, look, I, I tell you where I do, do, do absolutely agree with, with, with Kirsten is that uh, the policy of, of diversion itself as a standalone policy is not enough. Um, but the problem is, is what are you diverting these people to? Uh, and my big issue is that if the police are simply issuing warnings to people, they will fall off the radar of the system. They will likely go back to dealers who will then issue them with small quantities of drugs that they, they can then go back out in the streets with uh, knowing that they're likely just to get 
a warning. I mean, these are class A dangerous drugs that are killing people, uh, and and they are part of a much wider criminal system. So you know this this apparent decriminalisation, uh, which effectively is what it is doing, uh, is not tackling the root cause cause of the organised crime that goes on behind it. And the issue of drugs in our prisons is a very serious one. The way to tackle drugs in prisons is not simply to decriminalise drugs, it's to tackle the drugs that are getting into the prisons in the first place. And I've seen that at first hand in a recent uh, visit to a prison. Uh, this is an endemic issue. But I also know that there are very good programmes mm -hmm. in our prisons which are helping people uh, rehabilitate and get off drugs and alcohol. Okay. And in fact, one prisoner I met said he was getting better treatment in prison than he was when he was shunted back out into the community, where there is simply nothing in some communities. And years and years of cuts, financial and resource okay. cuts, to drugs and rehabilitation services Let are the end product of Kirsten, that, and that's got to change, and that Kirsten, needs to be the focus this, of our government. Kirsten, what about this idea that it doesn't tackle the problem of um, drug pushers, of the dealers? Yeah, I mean, that's not what it's intended to do. I mean, it's intended to reduce the harms for the people who are actually experiencing the drug problems. Um, and the fact of the matter is that we shouldn't have so many people in prison in the first place who are going in for these low-level drug offences. Where we do agree absolutely is that our treatment services need to be adequately equipped and resourced to be able to deal with the numbers of people who actually require drug treatment. So the medication-assisted treatment standards that are to be introduced in Scotland absolutely have to be embedded within services. We need to make sure that people have quick access to equitable treatment across the country, that that is available for them on the day that they are in contact with the service and that they are, there is choice okay. and that people have um, Right. as much time as they need okay. within those treatment services. Okay. So we, we absolutely need to ensure okay. that we'll our treatment is effective will, across the we'll country. We will have to leave it there, both of you, but thank you both very much indeed for joining us.